How can the small bolt be so catastrophic? We're gonna get right into it, let's go. Do you ever go to install one of these? This kit, pretty easy to do, a sway bar kit from 1AAuto.com. But not if you run into what we call a snag in this industry. And that would be a severe breakage of a bolt. And not just the little six millimeter bolts that hold this in to the subframe, but what about the subframe bolt, the main cradle? That is the difference between a junkyard and a new car. Well, I want to show you some quick ways by the pros of what we use and how we're going to get rid of these situations and solve them. So here we are located under the car that we're going to do that sway bar link. Replacement and bushings, well, we ran into a problem. Subframe has to come down for that job because you take the whole bar out. We're replacing the bar also. So the bar comes out, so we have to drop the subframe just enough to slide it out. And in that process, there's four mounting bolts for the subframe. They both go on both sides through the control arm. And then you have two back here, one on this side and one on that side. Well, this one, once we put the air gun to it, it just snapped, broke right in place. We have to get this bolt out because now this car is no good if we don't replace it. It holds the frame, the subframe, to the body. And without it, that could be catastrophic. We bought the bolts already from the manufacturer because it's the correct bolt. So I'm gonna start with how I would do this as a DIYer and go through the stages up to the pro because not everyone's gonna have the equipment that we have. But let's start with the lowest and see what we can get. So here we have the other cradle bolt that we know is frozen because we already put our air gun to it and it just danced in place. It's no movement. Before it breaks, we wanna heat it up. Now if you're a DIYer at home and you don't have a lot of equipments like a welder or torches or inductor, which is a heat gun that heats that up, I'm gonna show you what you can use. You can use just a regular can of butane and we're gonna heat this up pretty good. We wanna get the heat to resonate right up through that bolt and into the threads. And we're gonna to try to get that rust or the actual Loctite from the manufacturer that's been in there for well over 20 years to free up. I'm gonna heat this so that bolt has a little bit of a red hue to it. So this could take up to five minutes. We just don't give up. All right, let's give it a shot. Let's see if we resonated that heat up there. Look at that and look at that bolt look how thin it is that bolt is rotted right down to there that shank should be the same diameter as those threads oh I don't think it's gonna be fun on the other side <laughs> we got that out now I have to drop this cradle down I have to lower it down to get access to this broken stud and in the process I have to make sure I do it all correctly I'm gonna put a transmission stand here but I have to disconnect the steering rack. So don't forget, that rack is bolted to this subframe. Don't just drop that rack down attached because that's gonna pull that steering column out. A lot of damage, clock spring, just a whole bunch of problems. So we're just gonna take that nice bolt out, make sure that steering wheel's straight and locked so it doesn't spin. Then we're just gonna load this whole thing down slowly so we can access this stud. So now we're gonna center the steering wheel. What I like to do is grab the steering wheel, I'm gonna center it, I'm gonna move that seat all the way forward, then I'm gonna take the driver's side seat belt and wrap it around twice around that steering wheel and then click it into the receiver and lock it in place. That way there's a, no chance of the steering wheel spinning. If it spins 360 once, one and a half times, it could rip that clock spring and then we're in for another whole issue. So now I'm gonna take my pry bar, just reach in there and pull that boot up off that rack and pinion. I wanna expose that bolt on the other side. So now I'm gonna have to take an extension with a swivel socket, more than likely a 10 millimeter, and go up on the other side and loosen that bolt. There we go. Okay, so before I disconnect that bolt onto that steering shaft, I'm gonna mark it because I wanna make sure I line it up correctly afterwards with the rack. Because I don't know if this is a spline rack or if it actually has a keyway. It might have a keyway and it might not, but I have to do it prior to knowing so that I make sure that I line it up correctly. So now that I've marked that, I'm gonna take a 12 millimeter swivel socket and a long extension, and I'm gonna get right in there and hopefully break this free. See why it was so important to make sure that steering wheel sits still? Because that rack is, the shaft is trying to stir up the turn.
Now that the bolt's out, I'm going to take my pry bar. I'm just going to kind of manipulate it a little bit. See if I can make sure it comes off that rack because I don't want it to be stuck on there because the whole point of it is not to come down with the rack. I think it's going to stay. It's going to come down a little bit as the rack drops down. So we're going to have to pay attention to that while we support the rack and lower it. All right, so now that we have our subframe supported, I'm going to take a 19 millimeter socket and extension. I'm going to take my half inch gun and I'm going to drop both cradle bolts that go up through the control arm, one here and identically on the other side. You'll see that this is the, the long version of the short bolt that broke. There's two of these and there's one just like it on the other side. We're going to drop that right now. So now I'm going to lower this subframe slowly with my hydraulic jack, but I'm going to keep an eye on that steering column because I have to get that steering shaft off of the rack smoothly. So let's see how much we get movement. Okay, I can see that it's already giving it a little bit of a bind up. So let's see if I can help move it along. Might tap it with a little bit with a rubber mallet. There we go. Now there's no threat of any damage to that. And we can continue with this lowering of this. Okay, so now we've exposed this rotted stud rest of the bolt that's broken off. And you can see it's all like, ugh, it's in there pretty good. I'm going to just hit it with an air chisel just to loosen up some of that rust and hope I get a better grip on it with my twisty sockets. Just lightly tapping it. Yeah, see how I expose the threads a little bit? Where it's going to go. All right, that's pretty happy with that. And I'm going to use what we call in the industry, at least I do, a twisty sake. It's to remove studs or broken bolts or rounded off bolts. A twisted socket, man, it doesn't work great. So I'm going to heat this up with what any DIYer would heat it up with. I'm just going to use some butane, propane, heat it up the best I can, just like I did that side. And then I'm going to put on this socket and let's see if I can extract it. No. Oh. Mm. <laughs> not good. All right, moving on to step two. So the map gas or the butane gas didn't work. It doesn't get it hot enough because there's obviously a real problem up there. So I'm switching over to the big guns. We're going to use what we call an induction heater. If you don't have one of these tools and you are a pro, I strongly recommend getting one. You'll see hopefully just how great this thing is. It works so much better than torches and it's cleaner and a lot safer. There's 60 seconds. So I'm gonna remove it, get my socket on there as quick as I can. And that's what I'm talking about. Patience. Perseverance, don't give up. Look at that. Now we can move on to the actual repair. Well, hopefully that enlightened you a little bit of what you can do and how to extract a broken bolt. And as you can see, if we didn't do it, someone else is gonna get stuck with it. These bolts ate away. That's the original, that's the way it's supposed to look. And boy, oh boy, is that worn out and that's going to happen this car is an 08 so you know it's gone on 15 16 years i'm doing quick math and that's the one that broke on us right there I'm telling you that induction heat thing is a lifesaver you could have used a welder and welded a nut on that if you don't have one and you saw how this one helped with the actual just a plumber's torch that worked too so the key is get yourself a set of those twisty sockets also because you're not going to want to be on that with a pair of locking pliers Nice, easy, beautiful sway bar link kit from 1A. Install it. Hopefully you don't run into any of this nightmare. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell because then it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching. So here we are located under the car that <clears throat> I felt that coming on to. <clears throat> so now we have a corundum. No, what's that word? Is that a word? Conundrum. Conundrum. Yeah, is that how you say it? Conundrum? 
problem. Hopefully you don't run into any of this nightmare. Remember, I don't know what to remember. <laughs>